everyone. Welcome back to Beneath the Surface. I'm Crystal Hefner, and I'm really excited about my next guest. She is an internationally known professional matchmaker. So she's the expert on dating and she helps people be a high value person so that they can attract high value people. I have a lot of questions for her because of my situation at the mansion, how I ended up there and wanted her take on my life and also have her be here to help you with dating and different tips and tricks that she has for all of the guests. So without further ado, please welcome Nellie Sudri. Nellie, hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. If you guys don't know, Nellie is a number one dating coach and matchmaker internationally. Mm -hmm. And she's here to help me and help all of us today. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. Me too. Do you really need my help though? <laughs> I feel like you probably are like the last person who needs my help. <laughs> I feel like I need... You could probably just walk down any street in LA and get like a date. You're so sweet. I mean, you too. I, are you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I heard though, actually? Um, I was watching a TikTok, which is obviously like the number one place for all things advice. And someone posted a video and they were like, it is harder for attractive women to get dates than it is for like average women to get dates because a lot of men, well, obviously we, you know, you probably have experience where like a lot of men are intimidated, but also people assume that you're already getting pursued so much they're like oh you know oh, she must really? yeah she must have a boyfriend or whatever um and I also think sometimes it depending on how you're presenting yourself men might think like she's gonna be too much for me so really? um so yeah I I've thought about that like I actually even in my own life like I've noticed I get approached the most on the days where I'm trying the least hard like if I show up somewhere in like a hoodie I'll have like guys talk to me if I am like full glam people will like look but they won't they won't talk really yeah oh, yeah the glam makes you unapproachable I think probably yeah that's but sometimes that's a good thing like you know you don't want people who don't feel confident yeah around you either yeah. um but anyways I digress <laughs> <laughs> um I feel like I was more of the you know dress dress myself up type but now not so much anymore mm -hmm. um I, guess, I don't know what I, what my style is now you were a glamazon <laughs> yeah and now you're a normal person <laughs> now I'm like this weird like boho situation but. but you know what it's okay like we can always change and we can evolve and we can become different versions of ourselves at any point yeah so yeah that's very um, true I think also I'm at the point now where I don't feel like I need to attract any certain type of person. Yeah, I feel like I'm like, okay, this is me for me. But I wasn't like that before. Mm -hmm. you know, I was, um, you know, as you know, I lived in the Playboy Mansion. And so I dressed myself up and dolled myself up. And Every single all day? The assets to go to different parties and different things. Like, I, I guess I was in search of trying to be a high value person that someone would want to date but when I looked at your like kind of rules and tips and tricks like I don't know if I was really on that right path but somehow so, I ended up in the mansion anyway so yeah I mean I'm fascinated by your story because I think it's it's so emblematic of like the gender stereotypes right and like you have this like stereotypical alpha male who's successful and you know um he's the leader and then you have like the beautiful trophy wife essentially right and the girls who are beauty but you know they're there to go along with his program and so I think there are a lot of stereotypes to unpack there mm -hmm. but I'm fascinated by you know what that experience felt like inside for you like did you feel when you were in that moment that this was inauthentic or did you feel like this is actually where I'm meant to be um, I feel like that was meant where I was meant to be, but I think it was a culmination of like feeling like I had to fit in or small or make myself small to make other people happy. Mm. Like my, my whole life when I was, when I was younger. Um, so you weren't allowed to really have a lot of opinions when you were in the mansion? No, I wasn't. So I feel that I was perfect for that situation, um, in that way. And I know you talk about, 
um, women, like what women can do to find more high value people or high mm-hmm. net worth people and things like that. And, um, you know, I have come across a lot of women where they, they feel I'm, I'm, pr- I'm so pretty, like someone's going to want to just do everything for me. Cause I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just so pretty. Should I repeat it? Yeah, go on. Sorry, I was thinking sorry. <laughs> that was cute. I was like, what was someone's... I was trying not to say it. It's annoying. I was like, somebody What did Shrek is... say? Better out than in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what did I say just before then? You were trying to... You basically... You, you didn't have a lot of opinions. You Like, women have oh, to be so pretty. I was saying that... Uh, yeah, so a lot of women I came across, they just felt like... You know, oh, I'm so pretty that someone's going to just want to do everything for me and I don't have to do anything just because I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so much more than that. And looking through your videos and some of the the tips and tricks you give people and advice, um, it's so true because a high value person isn't going to just want someone pretty. They want somebody that's kind of goes along with their life and fits in kind of seamlessly. And it's it's actually a more difficult role than I think most people realize to be on a man's program, to be around a high value man, to be around a super successful man. It takes in a sense a very strong woman, I believe, because you have to balance and manage your emotions so effing well. And that is something that people don't realize is a, it's a talent, but it's a skill. And it's a skill that a lot of women now cannot master because a lot of modern women are very career oriented. They are very independent. And so it's not that they're, you know, it would be suppressing that side of themselves, but that side of themselves is so dormant, it will never come out. And mm-hmm. this is part of, why I believe a lot of modern super successful women are are single more than ever before. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have, I think I was reading 50% of women under 40 are single and childless. I believe that's a problem. Wow. Even though there are studies that also show that single women are the happiest and you could kind of play devil's advocate that way. I think it's a problem because what people don't really talk about, the dark truth that like we can't really say is, are these women going to die alone? And so you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't in a lot of regards as a woman. And I think we as women just have a lot that we're dealt with that, you know, we have to figure out. Like we're on a biological clock that men are not on. We have to be independent and self-sufficient, but also not too much of that. Because if we're going to be with a successful high value man, we also, you know, have a lot of pressure on us to be perfect and, you know, um, accommodating and agreeable and cooperative and so there are a lot of just different hats that women have to wear and especially if you want to be married to one of these men and you want them to take care of you and you want them to be more successful than you and financially well off which across the board women from my coaching experience and matchmaking experience always say that they want you ask women nowadays who are by you know for all intents and purposes average and they want to be with a millionaire Mm -hmm. um and so for women to have those demands, they have to understand that there is an expectation of you too. And it sounds like that's kind of what you encountered at the Playboy Mansion where to be around a man like that and to be basically on someone else's schedule, you don't have a lot of opinion, you don't have a lot of say, you're not calling the shots, you're not making the plans, you're going along to get along, that comes with a price too. And sometimes that price, if it's not natural for you, might be suppressing that little voice inside that says, I want to do something different with my life, or I actually don't want to go out tonight, or actually don't want to dress up like a stripper tonight. You know, (laughs) I don't really want to wear like three push-up bras or have my hair bleached so much that it falls out, which I know that is like a real thing. Um, And so, yeah, there's, I believe very much that there's like a cost associated with that lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. And things you were saying, like the bleach, you know, I would bleach my hair. He wanted like white, white blonde. And when it would grow in, because it was so white, my hair looked like really like really dark so he'd, he'd tap and be like time to fix it and then um yeah it would follow I hadn't I hadn't cut my hair in like nine years it would just it was like hey it just I believe that broke off and you know so much so many extensions and um and then another yeah. thing that you know we didn't even touch on which is you're also sacrificing your essentially like most prime biological years to be 
you know, with a man who's providing that lifestyle? And what is what are some of the things that come along with that that you're giving up, right? So you're yeah. gaining, but you're giving up too. Yeah. And I think that's what you know people need to realize is everything comes with a price. Whether you are and if you if you get to a situation where you don't feel like it is or the, the price that you're paying feels like natural to you and you're really happy with it, you've won. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of the times it doesn't feel that way. And it feels like, okay, yes, I'm getting X, Y, Z, but I'm giving up A, B, C. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of women do say they want to date like a really rich man or a really powerful man or a really successful man. And they don't realize like when I was at the mansion, I wasn't just having like ladies brunches in the backyard. Like mm -hmm. I was anticipating someone else's needs 24-7. Of course. I was, if I had a problem, if I was having a bad day, I kept it to myself. Mm -hmm. I don't bring it to him. I, no drama. Mm -hmm. So I'm just the one that has no drama. Yeah. Go along. I love, you know, I love old movies. Not, you know, like yeah. I love movie nights four days a week oh wow is that so romantic you have to mold yeah, yourself that's to be so someone romantic different. just somebody's cheerleader and yes man and your yeah. feelings kind of go by the wayside yeah. and so if people think that it's so enjoyable and you just get to do whatever you want it's not necessarily there's there's trade-offs let me ask you if you could go back would you have done it differently um like would you have maybe chosen a different path for yourself I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I, it's hard for me to imagine because I have just the path that, that I took. But um, I know that if I stuck up from, if I were in that same situation and I stuck up for myself more or had more of an opinion, I wouldn't have been there very long. Yeah. I think immediately, there were other girls there in the beginning, but I think immediately some intuition, something inside me was like, I know how to play this game mm -hmm. and I can do it better than them. Mm -hmm. And so I just made sure like I did everything he wanted, just made the perfect, like you could, he made it clear kind of what he's expecting mm -hmm. and just it's a conform. School. It, it's a school. It's, and I totally it's weird. relate. And the, the girls that didn't were gone yeah. and I could see it coming. I could have given them a little pointers, but mm -hmm. I'm like, nope, this like. Completely relate because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've also, I mean, I haven't dated Hugh Hefner, or, um, but I've, I've certainly <laughs> been around a lot of ultra high net worth men and I've, I have them as clients, I've dated them myself, and it's absolutely true that if you are not gonna fall in line, you're either in or you're in the way. Like, that's how it works. So if you wanna be with a man like that, you have to understand that you're playing by a different set of rules. And there might be a lot that you can extract from that situation, which it seems like you did, you know, in some regard. Like, obviously, you have grown to be this like powerhouse and I think part of that is I'm sure like part of your past that's helped you get to yeah this point. absolutely like I started stashing money and I'm like okay if I'm here and this opportunity and people are paying attention to me because I'm here like save 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 bought mm -hmm. my first house secretly when I was there and wow. just kept going and going and going and now I'm my own that person right like I won't give anyone like the time of day unless they're like super nice to me yeah. and not argumentative and yeah but yeah f back to the point you're saying like there, there, there are a lot of things that you have to... And I've had friends who have said that they want, and clients too, who've said that they want a certain caliber of man. But when push comes to shove, they can never seem to keep those men because they have too much attitude. They are too headstrong. They are too sassy. They're too domineering or demanding. That does not fly when you're trying to get with this level of men. And I don't think a lot of people maybe watching even understand the type of men we're talking about. Yeah. Like the mindset of a man who has everything. If a man has access to everything, you are replaceable. He can find another pretty girl who can get on his program. And if you want that to be you because you want the status of being with a man like that or you want the lifestyle that comes with it, you need to really understand that there is something you have to bring to the table. Yeah. And it's more than looks. It's like you said, agreeableness, problem solving, um, being able to anticipate their needs, being there for them to coddle them when they're when they're moody. Um, okay, I want sex, one, two, three. Like that's <laughs> yeah. a lot of the times how it works. And people, it's not, you know, I don't want people to conflate it with like, um, can we say the word prostitution? Like, it's not that. This is how a lot of these high caliber relationships work though. Yeah. It's, you are on his program full stop. Yeah. Sometimes you might get lucky and find a more modern man um, who is successful and not that way. Like those men certainly exist. Typically, I believe in what I've observed, the women who are with those kinds of men 
have been with them since before they made their money. Um, so the men who've already made their money and are single and they're bachelors, typically the most in-demand dudes that you, I mean, Hugh Hefner is like an exception, but mm-hmm. like men who are successful, they're already high net worth, they're already like attractive, that's what we consider high value. Mm-hmm. Those men are the most in-demand and because they're the most in-demand, you're they're not gonna like compromise for you to a great extent, maybe little things here and there, but like for the big things, no. Whereas like I had someone comment in my um, on my Instagram saying, oh, like, oh, but look at Mark Zuckerberg's wife. She's been with him since college, since mm-hmm. before he was a billionaire, since he was, you know, a broke college student. Like that isn't a, you can't even compare because she's been with him since before. So high school sweethearts, college sweethearts, super religious people. Usually I put them in a different category or sometimes you just happen to come across a really genuinely like easygoing guy who just happens to have a lot of money and doesn't care. Maybe he inherited it. That's a little bit different. But the men who have made it on their own, who are at that level, who are already single, they already are in demand, especially in big cities. No, that's typically not. I mean, do you, what do you think? Like, I mean, I agree. You have to make the person's life easier. And the the minute it's not, then yeah, I feel like they, they move on. And, and I do feel that that's kind of, become how I am now you know it's like I've I've been in a couple hard relationships and now I'm like if if it's not easy like I don't even want to deal the challenge with women who are either already financially well off and successful or women who are who have already been around super successful men like you is when you've already been around a certain level of wealth you're kind of tainted because everyone after that, you're going to measure up to that person. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, oh, but I've dated a guy who was an NFL player. I've dated a guy who was a celebrity or I've dated a guy who was a multimillionaire or billionaire. So if that doesn't work out, anyone you date after, you're comparing to that person. And that can taint women. And that's part of what also has kept a lot of these women single is they've been like, well, I can get a guy like that again. Well, maybe you can't. And maybe you should also just like accept someone who is going to provide companionship or create a family with you or insert whatever your goal is. Yeah, yeah. Or women who are really successful or educated, women tend to be hypergamous, meaning like they want to date someone who's on their status level or above. Okay. And so if a woman has, let's say, spent 10, 15 years building her career, let's say she's made half a million dollars plus, she is going to assume that any, like she's going to think that she, let me rephrase, she will want to date a man who is making the same amount of money or more, but men date differently. Men do not date women for their wealth. They're not like, oh, I want to date that girl because she's a millionaire, unless Mm -hmm. they're broke. Um, Typically men of that socioeconomic status, which is like her equivalent, they want a woman, like you said, who's going to provide value. So they're looking at her appearance typically as like a, you know, like a number one thing. Um, that's not the only thing, but like, does she look good? Yeah. Is she young? Is she in childbearing years? Is she fertile? Is she, um, all of the other things that are important to that man, but usually career and socioeconomic status rank pretty low. Um, so women need to understand that. And that's part of also why I think a lot of women who are very successful are single because of hypergamy. Interesting. Yeah. And we've, we're have we living in a society where women are more educated than ever before. They're more educated than men. Um, they are more successful than ever before, partly because of feminism. And I always say the road to hell is paved with good intention. So like with feminism came some great things. You know, we got voting, we got, you know, higher paying jobs, et cetera. But it also came with some negatives, one of which is a lot of women are devoting themselves to their careers. And then they're wanting to start a family once they've like, hit their career peak, but they're realizing it's a lot harder because now at 35, you're competing with a 25 year old. And a man is gonna probably pick the 25 year old who's prettier over the 35 year old who's not as attractive, let herself go because she's working so much. And yeah, maybe she's making more money, but he doesn't see value in that the way he sees value in the 25 year old. And so women, I think would benefit from understanding that men date differently and if you want a family, if you want to, you know, have a partner to go through life with, if you don't want to die alone, and I know that sounds really extreme, I would start getting serious about your dating goals and not just putting them off, putting them off, putting them off until you've hit your career goals. Mm-hmm. 
because your career will not fulfill you. I don't believe, and this is an opinion, not a fact, but I don't believe your career will fulfill you the way a family will. Yeah, especially maybe the rest of your life or, you know, eventually yeah. you retire. It's so. all fun. Like I was, um, I was, I love traveling and I, I definitely have had like my fair share of hot girl summers. Um, <laughs> and so like I was in uh, Turkey this past summer on a yacht and just like living it up in the, in, you know, in the Mediterranean. I've done that so many times and I'm very lucky to have done that. Um, but I just know that like that stuff is not going to last. And there's, you know, it could be fun for the next maybe 10 years, but after 10 years, unless I'm chartering my own job, my own yachts, what is my life going to look like? And so I have these conversations with myself, with my friends, with my clients of like, get out of the game while you can, <laughs> because it gets harder with every year for women. Interesting. Yeah. And um, do you think that that's shifting like at all where men might want a woman that's more successful or do you think that's only if they are not making much money or? I think it depends on the man. If we're talking about successful men, I don't think they care that much. I think it might be, um, I think what's bigger than that is like, are you interesting? Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a cherry on top, but a man's not going to date a woman for her wealth typically, unless he's broke. Um, if a man, if you want a successful man, you need to look good. Um, you need to provide value to him. And one of the ways you can provide value is by being a feminine asset. Beauty is currency in the dating marketplace, which is just a term that I use along with some other coaches to basically like reference the pool of singles that you are competing against and competing for. So like you have an employment marketplace, you have like you're coming out with a book, right? Like there are other books that are going to be at Barnes and Nobles and you're going to be one of them. Is it Barnes and Nobles or Barnes and Noble? Barnes and Noble. Noble. So. Okay. Um, there are other books that are there. You're competing with other authors, right? And like, hopefully your book will, you know, make the bestseller list and whatnot. The same in dating. You're competing with other single people. There are other single girls. If you're a woman watching this or if you're a guy, there are other single guys who are more successful than you, prettier than you, um, you know, maybe more interesting, more well-traveled, et cetera. What makes you stand out? Yeah. Like, and the men that women want the most, they're in demand. So ladies, like, yes, you have to compete. And women don't like to hear that. They're like, oh, I'm not going to compete for a man. Okay, then don't. Like, fine, but you will stay single or you're going to have to lower your expectations. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then how do you feel about, if, I don't know if it's trendy or what's happening, but like younger, younger men that are liking older women, like the Pete Davidson, Kim Kardashian. Okay. Um, on my Raya, I, <laughs> on my Raya account, I had a lot of people that were younger. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I think we have to separate celebrity world from real world first, okay. because I think first of all, we live in the bubble of Los Angeles where like, it's cool to date Kim Kardashian and like Pete Davidson elevated himself status wise in Hollywood because of that relationship. Mm -hmm. But I think in like the normal day to day, um, I don't, I, I don't know if there are a lot of like young guys actively seeking out like women like Kim Kardashian, 40 year old moms of four. I don't really see that happening unless again, she's really wealthy and he's not, you know, that's more of like a sugar mama situation. Um, but yeah, I think we have to separate celebrity world from real world. Interesting. I also think that like, let's be honest, are a lot of those men wifing those women? No, they're not. Yeah, so no. like, that's the bigger question. It's like, yeah, okay, he'll date you, he'll sleep with you, mm -hmm. but is he putting a ring on it? Is he providing for you? You know, and this is another thing, like we talk about Kim Kardashian, um, she's already very successful. Mm -hmm. She's gonna have, I think, even though she's beautiful, a difficult time dating because who is Kim Kardashian gonna date that's impressive to her? You know, she's going to have to date another celebrity. Um, okay, I read that she was dating like Odell Beckham Jr. Is he going to put a ring on it? I don't think so. Maybe because it's Kim Kardashian, but like these are not people who, like he's not. She needs someone, I think, who it, it's a very tiny dating pool for her, mm -hmm. who is attractive to her, cool enough for her, has enough swag for her, but is also like rich enough for her, you know? Um, and that's tough to find. That's really tough to find. So I don't know. Yeah. Small percentage. She there. may, but she also might be at a point in life where it doesn't matter because she's already had it all, you know? So maybe for her, it's like, I already have my four kids. I already was married to a billionaire. Yeah. Like I can have fun. 
it's different. But for someone who, for the women who are single and childless, it's a different conversation. Do you go out a lot? I don't go out much. So meeting people in the wild is hard. Yeah. So I have turned to dating apps. apps. Yeah. I wanted to ask you how you feel about dating apps. I got to send you a new dating app that I'm like on the membership committee of. I like help them with their stuff. There's a new one? Yeah, it's called Blush. Okay. You heard of it? No. Oh, I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah, I have Raya. Okay. I don't have Raya. I'm not on Raya. Okay. I feel like they don't want to let me on because I'm a matchmaker. Really? <laughs> <really> liked it. <laughs> that's the only app that's really worked. One time I went on uh, another one and they canceled me cause for pretending to be someone else, which I guess pretending to be myself maybe. Oh. <laughs> they thought I was like catfishing or something. That's wild. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been on, um, yeah, my last... Uh, couple relationships are from Raya. Okay. Oh, okay. But there's another app called The League. I've been on the, I used to be on The League. Really? Yeah. Why well, used to? Not anymore. I don't know. It's just kind of like, I, yeah. I'm on Blush now. I'll send you the Blush app. Okay. Yeah. Um, Blush. Blush is like an LA based app and you get like gift cards. Like I, you know how like on Hinge a guy can send you roses? So on Blush they can send you roses, but the roses have monetary value. So you can redeem them for like a gift card to Craig's or a gift card to like Harry's <laughs> oh Pilates. Yeah. Um, That's but cute. Yeah, I'll send you the blush. But yeah, it's dating apps are great. Like I always say though, when it comes to dating, it's kind of like finances. Like diversification is key. And if you're on only dating apps and you're not meeting anyone in real life, you are limiting yourself. So you, I think, are better off casting a wide net. Go to the holiday parties. Go to, you know... Um, workout classes, do the types of things that are of interest to you because then you're going to meet people who are compatible or like if you want someone who, you know, is into the outdoors and fitness and like yeah. is also successful, go to like Aspen or a ski trip somewhere, you know, yeah. like that's where you're going to meet people in person. Yeah. Um, it's tough if you're just like sitting at home swiping on a dating app. I think that was more <laughs> of like a thing during COVID, but a lot of people still have that habit because of COVID. Yeah, it seems like it. And I really like what you said um, on your Instagram about where to meet people. Yeah. Like, if you want to meet a type of person, you have to go to the type of places yeah. that those type of people go to. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. so. so true. Like, think about what kind of partner you want and then ask yourself, where is that type of person hanging out on the weekends? Mm -hmm. um, like, example, I was just talking to a client of mine today who is Indian and she wants to meet a guy who's also Indian. I said to her, when's the last time you went to temple? Yeah. Oh, I haven't been in years. Go to temple, you know, yeah. or like if you're like, and I'm not saying like become religious, just like if you're not, but like if you want someone who's like in a certain religion, go to church, go to synagogue, right? Like that's where you're going to meet it. those people or meet people who are in the community who can introduce you to other people. A lot of it is networking too. It's literally like a business trying to date. Um, you got to like network and meet people and like sometimes, you know, you're all, you're trying to figure out like who is the best candidate for this job. Um, <laughs> and so there's a lot That's of work. There's a lot of screening that goes into it. Um, or like if you're into, you know, fitness and the outdoors, like we live in California, go on hikes, be social, take your headphones out, say good morning to someone. Also underrated tip if you're looking to meet friends or potential love interest. Um, I think getting a dog is excellent. Um, I know you have a dog. I have a dog. I meet so many people through my dog. Um, and there are lots of dogs out there that need a new home. So I, yeah. I think that's like a double whammy, like yeah. kill two birds with one stone. That's really cute. Yeah. yeah, definitely get out there. And, um, yeah, I did think of that with a relationship that I was in. The person worked at SpaceX. Okay. And so like down in Hawthorne. Okay. And there was like this, there's like this bar by the air, airport there. That's like where the big SpaceX building is. And there's all these like. Does Elon hang out there? Yeah, yeah. Elon oh, hangs out go. there. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and all these like really nerdy, you know, and like handsome nerdy, like SpaceX engineers. And they're all there and they all go to this like bar in Hawthorne. Everyone watching is about to like get in their car and go to Hawthorne. I don't even know where that is, but it's I'm like going to put it in my It's like Hawthorne Airport. Okay. It's like the only bar slash restaurant like all at right. the airport. I'm and going this weekend. <laughs> but I remember like he's like, yeah, we all go there. Like, oh, I, why aren't people coming to this to like come? Because no one knows these? about it until now. So <laughs> now see. we're all gonna be going to Hawthorne. I'm gonna so like, places like that. Yeah. 
Um, Screw Aspen. Go to Hawthorne. (laughs) (laughs) Aspen. St. Bart's. I'm going to go there for. Oh, fun. um, Yeah. New Year's. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, That's a great place to meet people. Absolutely. Uh, That's exciting. Yeah. So you're going to be in the, in the right environments and it's just about like when you're there, putting yourself out there, saying hi, being friendly, you know, obviously you want to come correct, but I think you already probably do. Um, when you're, you know, out and about, like, you know how to show up and look good Mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's a, it's a full effort. Um, it is an effort, scary, but it can pay off. For me, like the physical effort is hard now. Cause I, I did it for so long that I'm like, oh. yeah, like, it's we're, tough. Like wearing a heel is hard. Is it, is it really that hard? <laughs> Kitten heels are in. <laughs> She's like, come on, Crystal, I was, don't be um, lazy. <laughs> I was in Miami for Art Basel last week and I love a platform heel cause I'm not that tall. Um, and so I love to like, you know, if I can add six inches, like I'm so happy, but it definitely sucks because when your feet start to give out, my feet started to give out, I had to leave. I I was like mentally ready to keep going. I was like, I am alive, I'm awake, like I'm good. But my feet were so in pain that I had to go home. Um, So it's a, it's a real thing. I can relate to the heels, but you got to just push through the pain. Yeah. Yeah. Push through the pain (laughs) because there might be a husband on the other side. (laughs) That's so cute. Yeah, I think I'm definitely lazy now, but. <laughs> it sounds like you have some things lined up, though. It sounds like I'm going to die alone, you mean? No, just kidding. <laughs> hey, no, you might meet Mr. Wright in St. Bart's. <laughs> you just got to, like, walk down the marina, you know, um, look for certain flags off the, off the side of a boat, you know. Like, oh, is this a thing? Well, like, you know, if someone's um, from, like, Australia or something, you can, like, okay. use that as a conversation starter. Oh, that's good. Conversation yeah. starters. Yeah. Oh, um, my gosh. Also, if you, like, if you just, I've had this happen to me before. If you, again, headphones out, you just look happy, you look like you're in the moment, you're enjoying yourself, people will bounce off that energy and they will approach you. But if you look like a recluse and you look like you're in a rush and you're on the phone all the time, like, it's going to be hard for people to approach you. So yeah. be in that mindset too. Like be relaxed. I am not encouraging people to drink, but I will say I'm so much more easygoing when I have a drink. <laughs> so um, I'm not like pushing that on anyone, but I do think like it can help if you, you know, loosen up. Like whatever you need to do to get to loosen up is good. Okay. Yeah. And then not don't look too hot, I guess is the thing. Because <laughs> like men don't approach if you're looking too well, hot or from the beginning. Or no, I think just look, look cute. I, no, I think look, I'm not saying don't look too hot. I'm saying <laughs> there are men who will not approach because they're intimidated, but those are not the men you want anyways. I see. You want men People who- People do approach if they're not. If you're a glam girl and that's how you roll and you want to wear high heels and have your hair done and whatnot, then you're going to want a guy who embraces that side mm. of you. So like, if that's not authentically who you are and you're doing that and like, yeah, it's not going to work. But if that is authentically who you are- then do that and the people who are into it are gonna approach. And I also think, ladies, especially if you're watching, it's okay to make the first move too. I always say like drop the handkerchief because guys sometimes need a little bit of encouragement, whether it's like looking at a guy and just like making eye contact and smiling or just going up to someone and being like, hi, I don't know if we've met yet. So great to meet you. I'm Nellie. I'm Crystal. Like little things like that, just give them the opportunity. It is scary. I am not like the best at this either. I've had to train myself to get out of my own head, but it really does make a big difference. If you see someone and you're like, I really want to talk to them, just go up and talk to them. That's that's great advice. And I've definitely heard a couple stories where... um, actually my neighbor she (laughs) they're engaged now but she said that she saw him on tv and thought he was just like so handsome and so she messaged him on instagram and good for her slid into his dm and said um something like do you want anything from whole foods like something oh my god (laughs) are they like married now yeah like they're they're engaged they just got engaged so i think that's very bold and brave and go for it like slide into the dm like that's really brave i don't know if i could do it but hey um, kudos to her that's amazing (laughs) there's Um, a yeah there's another one that i heard of that um she kind of sought this guy out he's a very very wealthy billionaire guy okay 
kind of sought him out at a charity thing because okay those people will charity show up functions. at charity always at charity <laughs> like um yeah and so she she showed up i guess he was going to the parking garage after the charity event uh-huh and she just kind of like ran up to him she's gorgeous you know she she does all the things like all the things you need to do exactly like what did she right? say she said hi um i just i saw you and i i just really f- feel like we were meant to know each other Oh my <laughs> god! I love that. Like, so, <laughs> is she with him now? They're married and they have four Holy children. Holy crap! Good for her. okay. So <laughs> I'm learning things. I need to be running up to people in a parking lot. Yeah, like, yeah I, just, I, I, I just feel like we're I meant to that. know each other. Yeah, that's I like the, love that. Well, because yeah. you know what? I do believe in like. Have you heard of invisible string theory? No. So like we have it. Basically, the theory says that like we have invisible strings that connect us and for example like you may have been um an event with someone before and you guys have a string but you didn't meet that day or like you know someone who knows someone you guys have the same mutual friends oh and so you have these like invisible strings that connect you to certain people in life who you're meant to meet but it's not always you don't always know when you're meant to meet them it's kind of like up to the universe and so I, that just made me think of it because it's like, I don't know why, but we're meant to meet or, uh, you know, something yeah, to yeah. that effect. So I just love that. Um, and I do think like there's something to be said about being bold, um, ladies, but it is scary. And this is partly why, <laughs> though, you have to feel really confident in who you are. Like you have to feel like a million bucks in whatever that means to you to feel that way. Because if you don't feel your best, it's going to be harder to muster up the courage to do what those two ladies did. Yeah. Yeah, and for some reason, I felt that I had a boldness when I was going to the mansion. You did? I really felt like there was some kind of boldness to just, you know, submit my photo and go up and then just go right into Hef's cabana, come straight up to, like, him at the party. And, you know, I, I was kind of shy, but, you know, I'm like, hey, and then ch- chatted to him. And That's I'm the like, nice thing I'll about do- being young, though, right? Is like when you're so young, you're not in your head the way you are yeah. when you're older. Like, I am kind of like that too, where like some of the things I used to do, I'm like, like I watched some of my old videos on TikTok. I'm like, how did I say that? Oh but like, the, you're just so naive to it. And yeah. the older you get, sometimes you lose that. So I think that's really great that like that sparkle, you had it and you yeah. followed it. Yeah, that's good. And I, I do think women should be bold. I do think, you know, if you think someone's cute, like go into the DM, like do whatever, like it, it's it, difficult. It can, it can it's pay difficult. off. Can, are totally you like? Can. Are you the type that feels the guy should make the first move? Or, um, mm, I think it's situational. Like mm-hmm. I'm not the type to just like go into a man's DMs and be like, "Hi, I'm Nelly. I'm single. I'm this. I'm that." But um, I will definitely like approach someone in person if the if it's if it, the environment is conducive to it. Like if someone's like talking to someone, I won't like go up. But if someone, like I was at Art Basel and there were a few people um, and I would just like go up and be like, hi, great to see you. Oh, you nice. know, it's, I think it's a lot easier when you have an introduction. Yeah. Like someone being like introducing you. Um, yeah, I don't think I could do in it's, person. Like, it's tough to though me. too though, Crystal, because my social media is very like um, loud and proud with the like dating advice yeah. and so it's if I was just like a standard social media page with like cute pictures of me by the beach yeah. I think I maybe would feel like more I could do that but now a guy goes to my social media he's like probably thinking and I've I don't know this is not I'm not confirming this but he might think like oh she's giving women advice on how to bag a billionaire and she's giving women advice on like <laughs> what to do if a man doesn't text you and like a lot of men might see that and be like eh, no thank you so I think it might make them judge you a little yeah for sure yeah. but like that's fine yeah. um you know for everyone who judges you know there's someone who is getting something great out of it so. yeah that that's good yeah, yeah jeremy, and, jeremy and i were talking about how there's so many like haters these days <laughs> like more than usual your haters <laughs> account for a lot of your engagement though so <laughs> yeah, i know to all the haters watching this <laughs> thank you keep watching i know we love someone you. <laughs> i know i know are you seeing anyone right now Oh my god! Because are you going to St. Bart's alone? That's what I'm really trying to ask. Like, or are you going to meet someone? <laughs> um, we have a little boat full of people. Okay. And so it's like a yeah, the little combination of some people. Is there a romantic interest on the boat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like what I told myself is be, um, I have I had two relationships that were publicly talked about. Okay. So. 
keeping to me it's a little embarrassing when like okay that didn't work out like okay that's next one's the same kind of time frame and like that didn't work out and then um then i've also gotten into arguments over social media with relationships where it's like oh you're not posting me are you embarrassed me are you ashamed of us and so i feel moving forward like unless i'm engaged to somebody right then i'm just it's a good policy te i'm technically like dating and single right if i'm yeah actually that's a really great way to put it i mean if you're in a serious relationship with someone, you're not like single. But I always say, don't take your property off the market prematurely. Like a lot of girls will get in these like situationships and be like, I'm deleting all the dating apps and I'm actually not talking to anyone. Like, mm. okay, do you think he's doing that? No. Yeah. And even if he is, like he could leave you at any moment and then you've just lost all that time for a guy mm. who you weren't even in a serious relationship with. So I always say like, don't take your property off the market until it's sold. And, you know, <laughs> you can define sold in any way. Maybe sold is an engagement ring. Maybe sold is a marriage document. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, um, take it for what you want. Yeah, exactly. That's, um... So you're you're going to have fun with someone. <laughs> oh, maybe it'll be we'll serious, see. maybe not. We'll see, like, we'll see what happens in life. I mean, I'm not getting any younger. and We'll see, but... Um, Would you get married again? Yeah, I want to. Yeah. But it's dating's hard, and like he's, you said, like, it's hard and different, you know, there's a lot of differences and yeah, th that I didn't have before that I have to deal with now. But, um, oh, <laughs> okay. I, I saw this thing on social media that was, um, this guy gave advice saying men like go after a woman, like if she has a boyfriend. Oh, he said, because you're only competing with one person. And if she's like single, then you're competing with so many others. Okay. So I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. I thought that was interesting. I mean, there. I think there are definitely men who will like hit on girls who are taken. But yeah, kind they, of to your point, don't care. are you really taken if you don't have a ring on your finger? I yeah, guess that's kind of know. the mentality. Um. So are you telling me that if I get in a relationship, my dating life will actually do a lot better? <laughs> I know, right? If I it does, much. then maybe I should take that approach. I don't know. I think like... I personally, my philosophy is like be with someone if you feel like they're the best person you can be with. Like if, if that's the best you can do and you really genuinely like them and um, you don't see yourself or have interest in seeing other people, like then be with that person. But if there's a side to you that's still like, maybe I can do better, like out of respect to them, out of respect to yourself and out of respect to the person that you're probably meant to be with, I would just stay single, um, you know? And I think a lot of people are insecure about staying single because they feel like, there is a stigma if you're single for too long or um, they have like a kind of compulsory need to always be in a relationship with someone. Mm, yeah. But again, like, it's is it better to be in the wrong relationship or is it better to focus on the relationship with yourself and hold out for the right person? I kind of lean toward that side. Yeah. Um, but, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. And then you, you're single currently? Mm -hmm. I'm always... I'm actually aggressively dating right now. Um, so I'm always on uh, the hunt for that person. But I'm not going to prematurely take myself off the dating market mm -hmm. um, until I feel really serious about someone. So, like, I will date multiple people um, and I will definitely entertain multiple prospects. But um, I'm not going to just commit to one person prematurely. I just moved to LA this past year, so I want to really see what LA has to offer um, because I am looking for something meaningful and I'm not just like dating to date, you know, yeah. or dating to have like a holiday boyfriend. I don't need that. Um, <laughs> like cuffing season or whatever they call it. Yeah, like it's appealing. Don't get me wrong. I'm like, oh my gosh, like it'd be fun to like have one person that I can like, but you know, I... I don't know. I mean, <laughs> You're like, I'm, but like, I have I'm going in circles. circles. <laughs> I'm running in circles a little bit. I don't want to say too much, but like, yeah. let's just say if I want to spend the holidays with someone, I can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just you know deciding if I want to. And I, I, I don't know. I have a feeling that maybe you'll have like a client that you're gonna maybe match with someone, but then you'll end up. With the client? You'll end, or like, not a client, but like maybe, because you said you know a lot of like high value, yes. different people that you match together. and. You know, I have a feeling like maybe that way, that's a way you'll meet like your own maybe. future partner. It's, it's actually really challenging because I will go to so many like events and functions, finding, like looking for clients. 
And then these men will hit on me and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know? I thought you were gonna I'm say like, the opposite, oh. like that they put you in a business box instead of like- No, I want to be in a business box. <laughs> um, I want to be in a business box. I'm, unfortunately, uh, it's, a, it's a bit challenging. Um, so, but you know what, it's fine. Like I would rather scope people out for myself. And then if it doesn't it. work, I can always just friend zone them and be like, actually, I think we're better off as friends. I'd love to set you up. Um, that rarely happens, but I like, mean, how nice are you? You're like friends only, but I'll help you find someone else. Yeah, I'll help you find someone else for a fee. <laughs> for um, a fee. Yeah. Oh um, but yeah. And I, you know, I'm always on the look out. It, ultimately my goal is I love matchmaking. I, I think, you know, matchmakers who are real true matchmakers have a gift. Um, but right now, like my top priority is also finding someone for myself. So I have a criteria that I go against and I'm like matchmaking myself. I also work with other matchmakers who are like setting me Aww. up. So I really suggest matchmaking for anyone watching. You do? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I've been with a couple of them. You have? Yeah. And obviously it didn't go so well. <laughs> it was okay. Oh, I mean, okay. I have like a couple friends from it. But. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, um, you know, it's good that you tried that and it sounds like you've done a few things to like put yourself out there. Yeah. Nothing is a guarantee in life. Yeah. Love is not a guarantee, but the more people you meet and the more people you meet who are compatible to you, the more likely you are to hit off with someone. Yeah. Dating is a numbers game. And, you know, if you're not out there trying, then it's going to take a long time. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I get but, out there. I need to get out there more. I just. Well, you <laughs> are getting home. out there. Yeah, I'm starting to. Yeah. So we'll see. I think. One of the things I truly believe in, Crystal, is manifestation. And I think if you visualize a certain life for yourself, you can achieve it. So like if you have a dream or a vision for yourself of being married one day or having children one day or whatever insert your dream is, yeah. I think you're 100% capable of achieving it. But it's going to take change. It's going to take doing things differently. Um, and then, you know, that version of you exists. Just you got a roadmap how you're gonna get to her. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's tough though. Like a lot of people, you know, managing your emotions and like managing through the day to day complexities of life and trying to just get through the day for a lot of people is so hard and it's not easy. And so getting to a point where you're like, oh, but I also wanna be this version of myself. Yeah. It's like, oh God, I'm exhausted. But yeah. you can do it. Yeah. You totally can. Um, and so, yeah, just as long, and it really helps though to know what you want. If you're not crystal clear about what you're looking for and you don't believe that you're worthy of your manifestation and you don't think it's possible for you or you just keep like bouncing between like, well, actually I do. I want to be a businesswoman, but I want to be a wife. Like pick a lane. You can always add to it later, but mm -hmm. it's so hard to manifest something if you're not even sure if that's what you want. Yes. I think that's important. You need to know what you want. <laughs> I think I'm still working on figuring out what I want. Yeah. But because when I first went up to the mansion and got involved with that whole world and became a playmate and all those things, I didn't want anything more in my life. Like I, I couldn't think of anything I wanted more than that in my entire life. You were content. Yeah. I'm like, this is what I want. I'm going to go get it. I want to yeah. be a playmate. I want to be part of the mansion. I want to do all of this. And I, I did it. You manifested that. I, I did it. I, I wanted, you know, I've never wanted anything more. Yeah. And I haven't felt that way since then. About something else. Yeah. It's so. sometimes like you have to dig deep to find those answers. Yeah. Um, like I kind of had a similar experience, different but similar, where like I wanted to move to Beverly Hills. I wanted to be on a TV show. I wanted to be the lead of a TV show. I wanted to quit my corporate job and start a social media platform and you know, I mean, I didn't like write this stuff down explicitly, but like that was my vision for myself was, yeah. okay, I want to have like, I want to be in coaching somehow, motivation. And then once you check those boxes, you're like, now what? Yeah. And so I think you have to sometimes like go a step further and think about what is possible for you yeah. and what the next step is. Like when I was manifesting those things, I was not thinking about, oh, I want to find a husband. I was not thinking about, like when I was, um, I, I wanted to go to an Ivy League because when I was in high school, I didn't have the grades to get into one. And so for me, and I come from like a family where it was like, that was like a very prestigious thing. And so I really wanted that for myself. 
I didn't think that was possible. I manifested that. But when I was manifesting that, I wasn't even thinking about a TV show. I was like, how do I just get to this? Yeah. But you have to create those goals for yourself, yeah. you know? And, you know, you've got a book coming out. Maybe your new goal is like, okay, I manifested the book. How do I manifest the bestseller list? Yeah. How do I manifest the second book, the sequel? Or how do I turn this book into a TV show? Yeah. Or maybe it's, hey, how do I start a family? How do I find that one person, right? Yeah. Maybe it's how do I make a million dollars, two million dollars? Like yeah. that, it's okay to be content. Like you don't always have to be chasing a goal, but there's so much to get out of life that I think if you set those goals for yourself and you focus on the manifestations, you're just going to feel so much more empowered because it's so fun when you can check those boxes and be like, I achieved that. Absolutely. You know, it yeah. gives you a sense of like personal accomplishment and identity and like, what is life for? Just to like sit on a couch and watch reruns yeah. of real reality TV like I do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stopping on January 1st. Is that your New Year's res resolution? No. Like, <laughs> I'm still going to watch garbage reality TV. But I'm going to add to that list. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's, and sometimes too, like the interesting thing with manifestation is you don't know how you're going to get there. Like the universe works for you. That's, it doesn't yeah. work against you. It works for you. So for example, like today, yesterday I didn't know I was going to be here, <laughs> right? Like I had no plans to be on a podcast. I was thinking about how I was going to design my new apartment to create like a studio for something. Yeah. And so like when I walked in, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy because I'm yeah. getting like the vision of like, you know, my, like what, how I want my studio to yeah, look. I'm not okay. going to do the guitars and all that. Cause that's your thing. <laughs> But, you it's, the, <laughs> but isn't it crazy? The wallpaper is like, yeah. that was fun getting like the And now I made a new friend. And so like, it's <laughs> interesting how the universe just works for you. Yeah. And it puts people on your path and opportunities on your path, either to test you or to push you forward. And that's the thing too. Like a lot of people, when they encounter roadblocks, they think like life is against me and like, yeah, I'm a failure or the world hates me or like why, like life is unfair. That's like the classic. But instead, I think it's better to extract what you're grateful for from that situation and think about like, what did this situation teach me? Yeah. What's the lesson here, yeah. you know? Um, and that's like, I think just a, a, like living in abundance yeah. instead of lack. Like, and when you have abundance, there's this, I just rant, but there's this thing called the law of abundance which means that there's enough to go around for everyone. And there is more abundance that comes when you live in abundance. So if you assume that good things are gonna happen for you, or you choose to look at the good in things, then you're gonna continue attracting that. Yeah. It's a it's like a domino effect. Yeah, I believe that. And gratitude. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like if you name a few things that you're grateful for every day, it's really hard to feel depressed and self-loathing when you're also practicing gratitude. And you're like, okay, I'm actually grateful that I have, like the, I do this every day, like the silliest little things to some people maybe, but I'm like, I'm grateful for my dog. Yeah, I'm grateful for my though. health. It's I'm, cute. You know, um, like everyone can find something to be grateful for. Yeah, and you're teaching others gratitude as well. And that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like you already are onto something. Oh on my gosh. Well, I can't wait to see you. what you manifest. Thank you. And you too, you're, yeah. Manifesting so it. much. You're, you definitely are main character energy. Like, I love it. <laughs> when it turns on, it doesn't turn it's off. It's so good. But, well, um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think, like, there are a lot of, like, because we were talking about love and dating, there are a lot of people who think that it's over for them. They had their great love. They're never going to find it again. Or those days are behind. Or I'm too old. Or I'm too fat. Or I'm too ugly. Or I'm too mm -hmm. insert your insecurity. You have the power to change your life. But it's up to you to make that first step, yeah. to decide what you want and how you're going to get it. And I believe everyone is capable of reaching their goals and dreams, but they have to confront it and then go for it. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like I'm an example of, you know, like I came from nothing and this life. Yeah, so. it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. Every way I got there, like here I am. So Yeah, and I probably <laughs> manifested it even subconsciously. Like if you, you know, knew that you didn't want to be in the world that you came from and you weren't sure how to get there, you figured it out. Yeah. But that's what, you know, everyone has greatness inside of them. Um, but you're capable of achieving even more. And like, I think, you know, you're come so 
far, but like think about where you could also be in like five years or ten years. Like, and that's exciting. And I think that's like something to be really like excited about and yeah. encouraged for. So that's awesome. I feel the same about you. You're like you're just blowing up. And it's, it's incredible. Chelsea, Chelsea, <laughs> so, I'm still writing my very story. Proud, very proud of you. But anyway, thank you so much. by the way she was plug um and you want to be set up i have a free database on my website which is lec3.com and you can just enter your information your photos and if i have a client in a city like you my phone call will be like set up that way i also have a dating course um on, you can go to my instagram it's in my bio and then your instagram is ask.nelly yes yeah so check it out 12 steps to manifest this right um but yeah, I, I hope everyone watching, you know, got some value and this was so fun. I'm so happy. It was met. awesome. I'm so glad we met. We, we could keep talking out there. I know, I know. <laughs> but we will off camera. So yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.